Welcome to Transport Vlog. My name is Paul and I'm currently at Bankstown Station and this is your all stations update video from Bankstown to Sydenham. So that's 11 stations in total plus 5 traction substations. Now this update follows a two week shutdown so quite a lot has changed. And that shutdown was between the 24th of September and the 9th of October 2022. All footage is on the 16th or 20th of October unless mentioned otherwise. The metro platform on the south side looks pretty much finished now. Here is a look at this from the train. There are no platform screen doors as yet. These will probably be installed during a future two week shutdown or during the longer final shutdown prior to opening as a Sydney metro line. Here is the services building which looks pretty much finished as well. Here is a look at the supporting wall for this platform as it was back in June. And now the whole of the back of the platform, including the supports for the canopy. To see how this platform looked in April 2022, check out this video appearing on the top right now. The services building is on two floors, with the upper level being the station control room and the lower level housing comms, signalling and power equipment. Notice the gaps in this brick wall. Besides looking kind of interesting, they do serve another purpose which I'll reveal later. Work is yet to start on the other terminating Sydney Metro platform. As this last shutdown also closed the line west of Bankstown station, I was curious to see if anything had changed at this end. And it hasn't. And if you're not aware that the platform is being lengthened at this end, then you need to watch this video appearing now. Now for the first substation, which is a little west of Punchbowl. It consists of a white porter cabin like structure that will be covered by this rather interesting wall which is just a metal frame on the roadside. This and the other four substations between Bankstown and Marrickville will provide a dedicated 1500 volt supply of electricity to power the metro trains. Now at Punchbowl station and the new aerial concourse bridge has progressed really well since I was last here and that's a lot to do with the two week shutdown. Glass panels have now been installed on the east side of this bridge. And this includes the lift entrance area. Here is a closer look at these glass panels. And this is how it looks from the west side. I don't think the glass panels have gone in as yet on this side, except for the stairs at the end. Back in June, it was just a metal frame. Whilst the sides and roof canopy are new, the metal base and vertical supports are part of the original bridge. However, the brickwork under the stairs is new. Notice the gaps between the bricks here too. No changes to the stairs, but the hoop top fencing on the sides has been replaced. Minor upgrades are planned for the stairs in the future. And the stairs now have a brand new canopy. The lift to the platform is behind this blue hoarding and is connected by this short entrance bridge. And this new window brings lots of natural light into this part of the original Heritage Concourse building. Now walking towards the boulevard entrance, the roof now looks complete. Before the shutdown it looked like this. And back in June, more like this. The boulevard side is really looking like a modern metro station entrance now. With the new glass panels and handrails on either side. And the glass panels are much taller than me. The Heritage Concourse has a new window on the east side as well, which is close to the new lift for the Yurunga Parade entrance. And you can see how this window brings in more natural light. This is looking towards Yurunga Parade. Notice the partially completed ceiling. Now it's the Yurunga Parade entrance and you can see more of the canopy ceiling exposed. The lift on the left is progressing well, and you can see how this new entrance integrates with the original weatherboard building. Work has not yet started on the new pedestrian plaza adjacent to the Yurunga Parade entrance, which will use this land here. This is one of the new Sydney Metro seats, with the station name sign above. Along with the new Sydney Metro style lighting and a strange T structure. And at the eastern end is the services building, which is on the north side of the rail corridor. And this is how it looks at the moment from Yurunga Parade. So I'm now at Wiley Park Station and in the original station building there is now a fully accessible toilet. Let's take a look inside. The toilet entrance is on the west side of this building. And this is how it looks inside. It's very large, so there's plenty of space. The two new platform canopies are almost finished now with the one on the left also being the roof for this new station building, which I'm guessing will be for the station control room. 
And those gaps in the brickwork? Well, these are for the air conditioning units, which you can just about see inside. There are lots of orange and white wires coming out of the ceiling. If you know what the two colours are for, then do share this in the comments below. The westbound platform canopy now has the finished ceiling, which looks like this. The ceiling design looks very similar to the one being used for the roof and canopies at Punchbowl Station. These two lift shafts went in during March 2022. They were the first new lifts to be installed on the Bankstown line as part of the Sydney Metro project. And with the doors and other machinery now in place, these are likely to be the first to open too. The hoop fencing on both platform ramps have now been replaced with this new fencing. This is the original station building, and in front of this is a new plaza. This will also allow passengers coming from Stanley Parade, which is behind me, to access this station via the plaza. And now in view is a new canopy that bridges the gap between the station building canopy and the canopy for the city bound platform. The old and the new side by side. The ceiling of the new canopy is the same design as the ones on the platform. And you can see how it connects with the existing station building canopy. A similar canopy is being built to connect with the Bankstown platform ramp. And from the platform, it's a little easier to see how both canopies connect with the station building. Wiley Park also has the new Sydney Metro seats with an integrated station sign. So I don't think these old blue seats will be around for much longer. The new Sydney Metro platform lights have also been installed here. The services building, which is at the western end of the station, looks finished. And here is the other side of this building. And here is a closing view of Wiley Park Station with a Waratah train departing for the city. So now at Lakemba Station and the main thing to show you here is the services building which is right behind me. Unlike the Punchbowl and Wiley Park services building, this one has a brick finish with the now familiar gaps in the bricks further up. Lakemba also has the new Sydney Metro seats with the integrated station name sign. The orange station names are temporary and will be replaced with blue signs following conversion to Sydney Metro. As you can see, these seats are exactly the same as the ones on the Sydney Metro Northwest line. And some seats are not connected to station signs, such as this one. On the east side of the station, the Holden Street Bridge now has anti-throw screens. All bridges across this future Sydney Metro Rail Corridor will have similar screens in the future. Shortly after Lakemba is another substation, and here it is. No wall as yet, so you can see the porter cabin like building, and it looks like the interesting stuff might actually be below it. Now it's Belmore Station, and there are a couple of things to show you here. Such as the now familiar brickwork with gaps in it. This time it's under the stairs and with a door. This leads to a storage area, which also has an air conditioning unit. And there's a new accessible toilet, which like the one at Wiley Park, also includes baby changing facilities. The entrance to this toilet is on platform one. Interestingly, these new Sydney Metro seats have a much larger space between the two armrests on one side. Could this be for extra large people? Or to allow a couple to be close and intimate whilst waiting for their train? And here is a view of the new lighting that was installed during the latest two week shutdown. The new plaza on the south side of the station now has most of the paving and some bicycle hoops. There is also a new bus stop and shelter on Tobruk Avenue, which will open when the plaza has been completed. No progress on the plaza for the north side as yet. The services building is just east of the station on the north side, and this looks finished. Now on the approach to Campsy Station, and here is the third substation, which is very, very long, and it looks pretty much finished. Unlike this services building, which is at a much earlier stage of construction. So you've just seen the substation and the services building on the approach to Campsy Station. So I'll show you a little bit more of that from the street. And then I'll show you how the new entrance is progressing because work has started on that now. This is the east side of the substation. The design of the external wall gives it a very distinctive look, whilst the light colour makes it seem unobtrusive as well. And this is the west side. The services building is currently just a metal frame, and that reminds me of how many of the other finished services buildings looked just a few months earlier. Supports for the new canopy roof have appeared at the Campsy Station entrance. The new roof will partially cover a new pedestrian plaza that will be in front of the existing station entrance. In this artist impression image, 
you can see how this canopy will surround the plaza area and provide a more welcoming approach to the existing station entrance, which will remain largely unchanged. A peek through the fencing on the left reveals more of the canopy supports and parts of the concrete floor. A retail outlet will go in here. The plaza will continue on the other side of this temporary passageway, with the supports for the canopy roof that will lead to the existing lift now in place. All the canopy supports went in during this latest two week shutdown. Here is a view of this work from the other side of the ticket gates. Now back on the platforms, and the new Sydney Metro lights have gone up, but I couldn't see any of the new seats. Here are the new lights, along with three 81 class locos and a Waratah train. Now on a footbridge a little east of Campsie Station, these points indicators will be for this crossover on the right when it's converted to Sydney Metro signalling. And if you want to know why it's a points indicator and not a signal, then watch this video appearing on the top right. You can now see some white stumps or footings. These are for a fence that will physically separate the Metropolitan Goods Line from this future Sydney Metro Line. Now at Canterbury, and there's been a few minor changes up at the main entrance, so I'll show you those. Similar to Wiley Park, a new pedestrian plaza is being built on the north side, and this is behind these hoardings. This new plaza will allow passengers to exit directly to Broughton Street, which is here. The existing bus stop has been relocated to where this new shelter is. This is the lift for Platform 1, for trains to the city, and now the lift for Platform 2, for trains towards Bankstown. Both these lifts went in during May 2022. And these new stairs for Platform 1 were also installed at the same time. However, this canopy over the stairs is new, and has glass panels that were installed during the last two weeks shutdown to allow natural light to filter down to the stairs below. This is how it looked before the last shutdown. No changes to the ramp to Platform 2 or the concourse bridge at the moment. But the bridge walls and canopy will be refurbished, and I'm sure the Platform 2 ramp will get a makeover too. The new seats and lighting are now in place. And we have a new accessible toilet at the west end of Platform 1. This one is a little strange in that it has the three original cubicles which are permanently locked, and then the accessible toilet and the baby changing facilities. The services building is at the western end of the station and on the south side, and it's at a similar stage of completion to the one at Campsie. But being on a slope, this one has extra retaining walls. Between Canterbury and Hurlston Park is another substation, and this one looks more or less finished. And now the services building for Hurlston Park, which is a good 500 metres west of the station. And here it is from Railway Street. This one has a large supporting concrete structure. So behind me is the entrance to Hurlston Park station, lots to tell you about here, including a new lift and a new roof. And here is the new roof, which now covers the entire entrance area. The stairs to platform 2 are here and the new lift is here. This new roof canopy will provide weather protection for this whole area, including for both lifts. The entrance to platform 1 is behind the original overhead booking office building, which will be reclad to look more like this. And here are the brand new lifts and stairs. The Platform 1 lift and stairs went in first during May 2022, with the canopy roof going in during the last shutdown. The original stairs used to lead directly to the station entrance. However, to create space for the lift shaft, the new stairs veer right to go around it, and then continue to the entrance. Storage space has been created under the stairs using the familiar gapped brickwork. The Platform 2 lift and stairs came later, being installed during the two week shutdown in early July 2022. Again, to create space for the lift, the new stairs veer around to the left, and then continue to the entrance. And storage space has been created under these stairs as well. This station also has the new seats, signs and lights. And, you guessed it, a brand new accessible toilet, which is also on Platform 1. Just beyond the east end of Hurlston Park Station, you can see the first posts for a fence that will separate this future Sydney Metro line from the Metropolitan Goods Line. This fencing will run from Marrickville to where the goods line diverges off just west of Campsie. 
The fencing will provide additional protection in the case of a derailment on either line and provide safer working conditions for track maintenance staff. Here is the services building on the approach to Dulwich Hill Station. It's on the south side of the rail corridor and is west of the station. You can see some of the brickwork behind the scaffolding. So now it's Dulwich Hill Station and this is the moment you've all been waiting for, the brand new aerial concourse and the two new lifts. Let's check it out. The new aerial concourse starts close to the Dulwich Hill light rail stop entrance on Bedford Crescent. It then goes over the Metropolitan Goods Line tracks, the city bound line, to the island platform where there is a lift on this side. It then continues over the westbound line to a new entrance on Ewart Lane, which is what this lift on the right is for. These are the stairs that lead up from the new Ewart Lane entrance. They are on the opposite side to the lift. And coming into view are glimpses of the stairs to the island platform. As you can see, these stairs are at a very early stage of construction. Here is a closer look at the stairs that will lead up from the Ewart Lane entrance. And this whole area will be transformed into something like this. This is looking from Ewart Lane with the stairs on the right and the lift on the left. And this is how it will look when it's finished. Let's take a look at the Bedford Crescent side. The aerial concourse has level access with Bedford Crescent and also with the existing lift for the Dulwich Hill light rail stop. The roof will start where these two canopy supports are and then join up with the aerial concourse. This was pre-assembled off-site and then craned into position during the last two weeks shutdown. The floor is now being added along with the glass panels that will go on either side. Here is another view of the two lift shafts and the concourse from the west side. And now from the east side with the two sets of stairs. This new bus shelter on Bedford Crescent, close to the corner with Wardale Road, has the same design as the other shelters at Belmore and Canterbury that you saw earlier. Posts for the new lights have appeared, but no new seats or signs as yet. OK, so nine stations have four substations done, and the last substation is very difficult to see from a train, so I went for a walk. You can see that the rail corridor is in a cutting here, but the substation is clearly visible from this road. This one is a little less finished and you can still see the porter cabin like buildings inside. And interestingly, all five substations have been on the south side of the rail corridor. I wonder if that was deliberate or coincidental. And how about having a substation as a next door neighbour? No loud parties, screaming kids or barking dogs. Could be quite nice. I'm now at Marrickville station and there's something I need to tell you. Now, how can I break this to you? A pantograph survey was undertaken for the new metro trains and they found that part of this awning will not provide sufficient clearance for the metro trains pantograph. So there will be a tapered removal of part of this awning starting at 300 millimeters from this end and then reducing over the next eight meters. So this is what will happen. I've posted a link to the planning document in the description which will give you further details and also includes this image of the work involved. Marrickville was the first station to get the new seats and signs. I first noticed these in June 2022, although minus the station name. Also in June, I noticed several small shelters towards the eastern end of Platform 1, and these look similar to the bus shelters that you saw earlier. However, the only thing that changed as a result of the last shutdown was the installation of the platform lighting. The Marrickville Services Building is on the east side of the station, behind the Port Botany Freight Line. In fact, it's sandwiched between the Port Botany and Metropolitan Goods Lines. This is the other side of this building, with the Metropolitan Goods Lines now in front. Compared to the last four services buildings, this one looks a lot more finished. So I'm now at Sydenham Station, and I'm only covering this one because someone requested an update. So I'm going to see if I can find something that has changed. The only thing that has changed since my last update are door numbers and arrows for the platform screen doors, including the blue labels to indicate the doors for the wheelchair spaces. Other random things I noticed included this Sydney Metro seat outside the station on Railway Parade. And these perching style seats with an integrated station sign. And if Sydney Trains or Sydney Metro are watching this video, then perhaps they can arrange for the Burroughs Avenue signs to be temporarily covered up until the aerial concourse and Burroughs Avenue entrance opens. And on that note, let's hope the new aerial concourse opens soon, perhaps in time for Christmas. It seems to blend in very nicely with the silver K sets.
So that's the end of this Sydney Metro Bankstown line video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, do give this video a like, give it a thumbs up, do leave a comment or question below, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and also consider supporting me on Patreon. There's a link with further details in the description below. So I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you in the next one soon. Bye for now.